All right, let's have a little bit of fun today. So this is going to be a couple of videos in one. Uh, well, maybe three videos in one. First and foremost, it's more or less an encampment loadouts video, and we're going to talk about why we're going to run encampments in a second. It's also more or less essentially a speedrunning guide to encampments, and uh, you probably read the title. Most importantly, encampments are is and are essentially the best way to get Battle Pass XP in Fortnite Battle Royale. So I can show you guys an old video of mine uh this was not an old video but a recent video where i went ahead and covered all of the best missions for getting battle pass xp i still recommend this video link below i'm gonna go over it in that video of course you guys can get more info but i am cutting to the end here to say that encampments is by far the best way to get xp now it's not necessarily the best mission to run always and there's that's for a couple of reasons first and foremost category four ride the lightning deliver the bomb repair the shelter uh retrieve the data all of these usually tend to be like 164 player missions where you might get better rewards and all that so if you're not solely after battle pass xp and battle royale you might want to consider running those other missions but power level doesn't necessarily matter for this and that means encampments can be done very efficiently in about four or five minutes depending on how full of a team you have and whether or not you guys follow the tips in this video so it essentially means encampments is the best way to get strictly battle pass xp now there are a couple of benefits to encampments first and foremost it's the best for battle pass xp and again i broke that down in my other video but just to go over it quickly uh you can get all the different badges very easily you get a really good amount and you can complete it quickly that is a great combo and on top of that uh actually defeating the encampments can get you some pretty good rewards you can get coal you can get batteries you can get planks building materials all sorts of things all provided that you grab the presents and if you're strictly going just for battle pass xp you can ignore those presents to save a little bit of time but i, I think taking the extra second or two to grab the reward for the encampment it can it can fill up your inventory with junk but i do believe it can be worth it to grab that stuff just because coal and batteries and quartz all of that is super useful even as a max level end game player i am happy to get 30 batteries from an encampment from stonewood so that's just something that's really really nice and uh let's get into some general tips now first and foremost uh there are definitely good reasons to run in a full party on this there is no reason you have to be doing this solo um you can just do this in a public mission i guess or you can just join our discord link down below try to find some nice people to play with but while you can do it solo, if you have a group of people, there are a couple of tricks. First and foremost, the first encampment almost always has like just a few amount of zombies. You don't need everybody to run in that direction. What the other three people can do is center themselves in the middle of the map and use directional paths. There are two reasons to do this. First and foremost, one of the badges you get for Battle Pass XP does come from building. So by building, you know, resources using wood and brick and metal, I actually recommend brick because it's not usually used for anything crafting wise, and it's not always the best material for your defenses. So brick might be the uh, most cost effective I guess the cheapest one to just kind of waste and that will give you more XP at the end for some extra XP and of course the directional pads are just super cheap you can even get the uh, little nuts and bolts and planks from the missions you know from the actual encampments themselves so it's not too expensive to run these and they will get you around the map way faster than anything else secondly always be aware of where the encampments are on the map uh, those encampments will all get used if you do all I believe nine of them in the entire mission defense you will eventually be circling back so take mental notes of where all the encampments are they are randomized it's a very active mission it's very fun to be plowing through all these enemies so without further ado let's get into the loadouts i have specified this is by no means a comprehensive list however these are three very good loadouts that i'm going to recommend so let's first and foremost start off with one that you might all have and that is a bow loadout a lot of you might be surprised that i'm using totally rocking out I have always been a Blast in the Past fanboy. I stand by that. I do believe that extra health and tankiness is really helpful in the late game, but we're not in the late game. In fact, you'll also notice that I don't even have a healing perk here, except for Adrenaline Rush, and that is extremely intentional because, friends, we are in Stonewood, and I'm running with a full party of high-level players. You do not need any healing on this, and if you are using the Xenon Bow or the Vacuum 2 Bow when it gets fixed, uh, that Chain Lightning is extremely effective, and it is really, really good. However, I was running with a couple of people 
people who ran Dragon Slash and Teddy, and I didn't always have a chance to actually kill an enemy. So uh, the bows are a great pick because many of you probably already have a bow loadout because they're awesome. These work in 164 players in Frost Knight. These are extremely useful. If you don't want to make a new loadout for this, bows are going to be great. You're going to do just fine. I use Totally Rockin' Out because it's a waste to use Blast in the past. And if you want like a healing perk or something, I guess Survivalist, but you shouldn't need it. Uh, Quick Scope, Sure Shot, all of these are just really nice perks. Uh, all you really need is Stoneheart Farah, a decent enough power level. If you're like power level 40 or higher, I think you'll be capped at the power level 19 that Stonewood caps you at. So you're already going to be doing max damage, I think. Don't quote me on that, but you should be fine. Now, I mentioned a couple of my friends are using Dragon Slash. That is a really good option. Not the best. We're going to get to Teddy in a second here, but Dragon Slash is super good if you use dragon scorch in the lead i've even supercharged him your dragon slash should be super wide super strong uh that damage is nice to just one shot everything assuredly happy holidays is a very very useful perk for this indeed I do recommend it. I know you're only saving like four seconds on that Dragon Slash, but you'll maybe see from the gameplay here, uh, you do not have uh, you do not have a lot of downtime here. So you might be waiting in between waves, but that's it. It is important to slash really quickly. The only two perks that you really need here are Snuggle Specialist for that extra energy. Uh, well, that's actually recommended for the end game. Come to think of it, I don't know how many enemies survived long enough, but if you miss an enemy, that's just extra damage that might you know pick off anything that's missing. And Dragon Slash energy cost reduction is super nice because the uh, throwing stars and smoke bomb are both super useful and you can see that i even chose to ran endless smoke you don't need this it's not that important but there are lots of options here and one of them i actually went for is fleet again you don't need fleet but you are running in between the different encampments and one little hot tip for you is when you go on directional pads if you jump at the exact same time that it sends you you'll get about an extra tile out of that However, with a ninja, you seem to activate the Soaring Mantis, so you don't really get as much of a, a distance boost as you would from any other loadout. So an extra 12.5% from Fleetfoot does sort of counteract the fact that Outlanders are significantly faster. Not only can they get that extra distance on the directional pads, but they can phase shift as well, so it's kind of nice. And Fuel for the Fallen. You are using a ton of abilities here, and you will be getting lots of kills, so uh, Fallen Love Ranger Jonesy is really nice. If you don't have him, any sort of energy generation is nice. You can kind of just scroll through what your options are. Uh, I believe uh, Dennis is just an option here. Uh, burgers dropping stuff giving you energy it's one of many options and uh, that is something you can do but that's essentially the dragon slash build you typically want to use it for eliminating the big crowd of enemies while maybe the other three teammates are running Teddy. You only really need one or maybe two Dragon Slash users on a team. In some instances, we had really hard times with height differences. I hope the gameplay here can actually illustrate what I'm showing here, but Dragon Slash is not always the best because Teddy is awesome. But if you line it up right, there were a couple of encampments where if you combine a drone plus a couple of Dragon Slashes, you were, uh, you were eliminating that encampment almost as fast as possible. And I feel a little bad throwing this in late, but if you're running a ninja or any build that's not a teddy drones can behave very similar to teddies if you are with a team that is communicating properly you can stagger your drones one person throws a drone on each encampment you can use one drone for the first eight and then by the end of it a couple of you should have your drones back so you can throw them back in the air i don't recommend drones as your only damage you should be playing but they are really nice for just for some extra eye in the sky they will instant aimbot everything just like a teddy so you can kind of have a pseudo teddy and dragon slash build by just simply throwing a drone and i feel like that's a pretty good tip all right i've been hyping it the whole time this video oh my goodness was essentially inspired by the loadout you're seeing here teddy is a very complicated uh build if you guys want a teddy video uh comment down below i am very very interested in covering it because metal team leader is only one of like three or more really good teddy leads and even i use cyberclops quite a bit i even supercharged him for ventures because he has his own uses. If there is ever a time where power level does matter for Battle Pass XP and you have to be doing these encampments in like 140 zones, uh, Teddy build might be worth it. That might be uh, more preferred. However, I decided to go with an infinite uptime Metal Team Leader build. Now, there is one thing I want to clarify right away. Metal Team Leader is from a starter pack, and it was a money pack. That is cha-ching dollar bills. So all of you uh, might not have Metal Team Leader, and that is okay, because her ability is not only copied by uh, one, but two other heroes in the entire game. Game. Enforcer Grizzly is absolutely base game. You can get him any time of the week, any time of the week, any time of the day. You can go ahead to the collection book and just research him. And also Jingle Jess is, I'm pretty sure, researchable from the holiday section. Okay, editing beast here to say that Jingle Jess is a Frost Knight reward. You can't get her from the llamas, and you do need a voucher to research her. So considering that Enforcer Grizzly is base game and easy to research, he uh, might be the way to go.
But I will say, Metal Team Leader is not just me wanting a pink teddy, and that was a big part of it, but she also literally does more damage. It's not pay to win, it's not that serious, but you can see that 18.5 is more than 17.5. I don't know why Enforcer Grizzly and Jingle Jess are identical to each other. It's a little weird that they copied a hero like that, but Metal Team Leader is essentially them, but more damage. She has more health, but less shield, so it's kind of a wash in that department. But yeah, she's simply better and has a pink teddy, which is a definite win. Now, the reason we're using Metal Team Leader or, you know, Jingle Jess and Enforcer Grizzly is that extra teddy duration by 12 seconds matters a lot. An alternate lead that you can use is Fragment Flurry, where Charge Fragments do not buff your damage anymore, but they do reduce the cooldown of the Teddy, and it can result in essentially an infinite Teddy uptime, so long as you are always throwing it with a Charge Fragment in your inventory, meaning it's being used as a Charge Fragment and you're not actually spending energy on that Teddy, uh, Fragment Flurry is a really good lead. However, you will get an infinite Teddy from her, I believe, but you're still going to have to throw it again. Whereas with Metal Team Leader, you can have that Teddy up and available for the entirety of the encampment, which is really, really nice because it's there for the whole time you get the you get the teddy back before it's uh before it's even done and you can just throw it onto the next encampment now the loadout for this is rather important let me get to the important stuff right away if you're not using fragment flurry in the lead you want her in support because every 39 eliminations which you will be getting you get a charge fragment now in my recording i actually did take a little bit of time to get to the first encampment by grabbing those fragments i do think it's worth it if you're running a teddy build i highly recommend throwing a drone on the first and second encampment because you might as well throw your drones get up enough uh, eliminations to get a charge fragment and then make sure you're always running a charge fragment afterward because of our support perks like i said you won't use any energy and the cooldown is reduced naturally but we're also using gumshoe that extra 30 percent damage might be unnecessary because you're in stonewood but it will make sure that you're one-shotting or killing at least the mist monsters as fast as possible and on top of that we're actually using impossibility matrix if you don't have Old Glory AC, it's okay. There are other options, like if you've gone through the quest lines, there's Ventura Ramirez, where she gives you an extra range and damage at that range. There are other options in the game you guys can go through and scroll through whatever heroes you have but impossibility matrix does give you an extra 10 percent cooldown and it does matter that does make a difference and it does make your your teddy infinite without him you're kind of gonna have to wait a little while for your teddy it's not the end of the world you can still use his build but it's highly recommended to use him he is if you couldn't tell by the colors from the fourth uh, of july set i don't think you can research him but you can check in the collection book correct me if i'm wrong after saying that i did have to check you do need a voucher so if you don't have him it's totally okay but it's definitely recommended to use him don't vouch for him it's not that important but just saying he's a recommendation uh somebody that is base game is trailblazer quinn you get that extra 30 percent teddy damage pretty self-explanatory uh i do want to reiterate pressing charges is only giving you 30 percent if you use a fragment so your teddy will be at a, uh, a damage bonus you know deficit if you're not using her and then finally is kind of a funny pick jilly teacup it means you get a 100% crit chance against a new target, which means every single enemy you hit with a teddy, if you're not shooting those enemies, is going to get the most damage your teddy can do every single time on that first hit, which is really, really nice because what I'm saying is typically that uh, that crit on that first hit is in, is more than enough to just one-shot enemies, and Jilly Teacup is really nice for that. It can have a chance to malfunction, but that's fine. It'll just instantly kill everything a little bit quicker, and that's uh, not a bad deal. And if you don't have Jilly Teacup, she could be worth a voucher because if you don't have Happy Holidays, she will give you Happy Holidays. So I don't know if I necessarily recommend her for a voucher because in the end game, Jilly Teacup, 100% chance to crit isn't super worth it in my opinion. But if you don't have the team perk, it's worth a consideration. Uh, I'm covering it, but you, you can see it. Oops, I'm covering it. You can see it down there. It's a nice bonus to have, but uh, again, you don't need Jilly Teacup. Uh, if you already have Happy Holidays, there are other options, but that's... Uh, that's essentially it for the teddy build really really powerful i use this a lot for speedrunning encampments and it is definitely definitely a nice one to use and that's just about it since i covered all the tips early on these loadouts are my recommendations teddy build is definitely best in my opinion because it is just you know it's aimbotting one shotting every single enemy it doesn't kill the groups as fast as i would love so using a xenon bow or a teammate with dragon slash is super nice to get through those encampments quicker but if you play as a team and you just run from one encampment to the next it shouldn't take you longer than four or five minutes per run if you guys want to use code message checkout i really appreciate it videos like this take a lot of work thank you guys so much for watching and uh have a nice day dude dude do 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 do